Good morning. Uh, I am uh, State Senator Michael Skindle. Uh, I am joined uh, today uh, with a colleague of mine in the House, Representative Dennis Murray, and also Brian Rothenberg, uh, Executive Director of ProgressWillHow.org. Uh, we are here uh, today to announce that yesterday evening, uh, at the end of business yesterday, we did file um, a lawsuit on Jobs Ohio uh, in the Franklin County Court of Common Pleas, uh, again, uh, uh, exploring the and attacking the unconstitutionality of House Bill 1 as amended by House Bill 153, the state budget bill. Uh, we have uh, actually, since the initial filing of Jobs Ohio in the Ohio Supreme Court, we have made significant progress uh, with regard to our initial counts. Uh, for example, the Ohio Supreme Court did rule unconstitutional Section 3 of Jobs Ohio, uh, which is a section that placed uh, jurisdiction exclusively within the Ohio Supreme Court. Uh, I had brought forward an amendment uh, in the Senate, uh, removing that provision, which was voted down uh, uh, by, uh, actually tabled uh, by the Republican majority in, in the Senate. In addition to that, uh, since we have brought the lawsuit, uh, the governor has been removed uh, as uh, the head of Jobs Ohio uh, under 153. Uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, House Bill 153 removed a provision that exposed taxpayer monies uh, uh, in House Bill 1, and that provision basically said that should Jobs Ohio be dissolved, the liabilities of Jobs Ohio, that means if any creditors were out there, would be assumed by the state. Uh, we raised that uh, in uh, a committee and on the floor of the Senate, that particular issue. Uh, it was ignored. Uh, we brought that as an account in the initial Jobs Ohio lawsuit before the Ohio Supreme Court. And finally, uh, that provision was removed in House Bill 153. So we have made significant gains under um, uh, the litigation. Uh, the litigation is something that we did not uh, want to pursue, but felt compelled to, uh, to preserve and protect uh, the Ohio Constitution, which has been violated by uh, House Bill 1. Uh, in addition, we brought it uh, because we felt compelled to protect the uh, resources of the taxpayers of the state of Ohio, uh, and we felt that we have made so far progress on that. But there is more to do. In the complaint uh, that we have filed in the Court of Common Pleas of Franklin County, and I believe uh, Judge Laurel Beatty has been assigned uh, the case. Uh, we raised uh, two counts, two counts that were originally raised in the initial uh, uh, lawsuit uh, in the Ohio Supreme Court. One deals with the corporate structure of Jobs Ohio. Uh, there's a provision in the Constitution that says that the legislature cannot and act a specific act conferring corporate powers. Jobs Ohio, uh, House Bill 1, as amended by House Bill 153, exempts Jobs Ohio, the non-for-profit corporation, from many of the corporation laws that are governed, that governs other corporations in the state of Ohio. So thus, the um, legislation enacts specific act conferring corporate powers and that's in violation of the Constitution. In addition, uh, as raised uh, by uh, uh, Representative Murray on the House floor, and I continue the argument in the Senate on House Bill 1, uh, a major concern of the legislation deals with uh, the uh, investments of the state into a corporation, as well as the subsequent investment of that corporation into other corporations. And at this time, I'd like to call upon Representative Murray uh, to uh, address uh, that particular, uh, and those particular allegations uh, in the complaint. Representative Dennis Murray. 
Thank you, Senator. And let me start off by noting that all of us uh, appreciate the governor's approach to trying new ways to solve some of Ohio's old problems. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I want to start off by acknowledging the fact that uh, that kind of entrepreneurial spirit, if you will, is great. But we come to this issue in the, in the framework of an existing constitution that we are obligated to uphold. And the constitution is not self-effectuating. It doesn't get enforced unless we take it to the courts and ask the courts to enforce this. So in, in this context, when we're talking about the creation of Jobs Ohio and the investment of Ohio dollars in the corporation known as Jobs Ohio Inc., uh, and then the subsequent anticipated investment of additional dollars in private corporations throughout the state, we come to it in the context of a state that was nearly bankrupted in the first part of the 19th century by investments in railroads and canals, uh, both at the state level and at the municipal level. So in the Constitutional Convention of 1850, and I know this is some old history, but in, in, that, in, that, in those debates, the delegates were very concerned about the fact that we had nearly bankrupted the state. They adopted a provision that says, no more. We will not tolerate the investment of public dollars in a private corporation. That has stood these 161 years. It wasn't even opposed at the debate of, of 1850. It was subsequently adopted by the voters. The Ohio courts have looked at this issue and repeatedly said, yeah, it means just what it says. You can't take public monies and invest them in a private corporation. And so Jobs Ohio, as we have been pointing out now for seven, six or seven months, uh, violates that precept uh, at two levels. First, by taking money, state money, and investing it in Jobs Ohio. And then uh, both the governor and, um, and Mr. Kwame have spoken on numerous occasions about their desire for Ohio to be able to be an equity player, to take a position in these companies and achieve a return on that investment. Uh, you know, that may be good for hedge funds, it may be great for Wall Street, but it's not good for government. The, the voters of Ohio were wise to put this ban in the bill, or in the uh, Constitution, and it's enforceable today, and that's what we're seeking the, to, what we're asking the courts to do, is to simply declare that, yes, that does mean exactly what it says. And before we go too much further down the road, spending a lot of state dollars and becoming, uh, getting ourselves into a situation where we're going to potentially have to unwind a lot of contracts and investments at a loss to the taxpayers, we're going to be asking the court to block that action. Um, as Senator Skindall indicated, there are, we've made a lot of progress with respect to Jobs Ohio. It's a better bill, better law uh, today than it was when it was first proposed because of changes that the Senate recognized were necessary as part of the budget process because of what the Supreme Court has said about uh, HB1 and its unconstitutional branch of jurisdiction. But uh, all that doesn't fix what is still a fundamentally bad bill. Um, that we should not be taking the Department of Development and those very important functions of state government in shielding that from the su sunshine laws, shielding it from the public records laws, and we shouldn't be, in my judgment, continuing a practice of essentially taking Ohio to a pawn shop, because that's what we're doing. Uh, this is going to be funded by selling off through a long-term lease, the Department or the Division of Liquor Control. It's the same thing we're talking about the Turnpike. It's the same thing we're talking about with prisons. It's the same thing we're talking about with the Ohio Lottery. We're taking long-term assets to the pawn shop, and we're putting future dollars, future revenue streams at risk in order to be able to uh, fund what the governor wants to do today. So uh, I disagree with that approach, and I'm happy to join both Progress Ohio and Senator Skindle as plaintiffs in this action.